Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg addressed privacy questions at the company's F8 conference today in San Jose, California. The two-day event is usually an opportunity to showcase new products, but today Zuckerberg made sure to outline changes that the company's making to protect its users. This year is that we need to take a broader view of our responsibility. It's not enough to just build powerful tools. We need to make sure that they're used for good, and we will. Now, we're idealistic, and you know, we've always focused on all the good that connecting people can bring. And there's a lot of it. You know, just since the last F8, you know, we've seen the Me Too movement and the March for Our Lives organized at least part on Facebook. But we've also seen people try to use these tools for harm. And that goes for Russia interfering in elections, for fake news, for hate speech, and for data privacy issues. So we're investing a lot to address these issues and keep people safe. And I'm gonna go through all of that head on. Well, this is the first time Zuckerberg addressed the public after he testified on Capitol Hill last month. Lawmakers demanded answers after data from millions of users were exposed. Dan Patterson is a senior reporter for Tech Republic, and Ian Scherer is executive editor at CNET News. He joins us now. So, Ian, do you think that Zuckerberg properly addressed sort of the big elephant in the room during the keynote address? Uh, he definitely attempted to. You know, there was a lot of uh, attention and interest riding on this event and I think uh, more so than normal this was not just a developer event this was really what is Mark Zuckerberg gonna do going forward and I think that not addressing it all would have been a very big mistake and look a lot of this was the greatest hits that we've been hearing for a while from him now right about how uh, Facebook is optimi optimistic and idealistic and how um, they got kind of uh, surprised by this bad behavior and how they're trying to solve for it. Um, but it's it, at the same time, he also tried to show that he's got ideas about how to fix this thing going forward. These these new clearing your history information and all the other privacy stuff that he's starting to, to kind of offer is a way that he's trying to say, look, you know, here's, here's how we're not just going to take this on the chin. We're going to try and move forward. So during the conference, we know that Facebook unveiled a tool which allows you to clear your browsing history. Dan, what's this exactly about? Well, the tool, like many of the tools that Facebook has released since the Cambridge Analytica scandal, allows you to clear a lot of that front end data. What it does not do is clear the back end data, the cache for the server information, if you will, uh, that Facebook uses to build an advertising profile about you. So what, ultimately it still exists on a server even though you're clearing it. Yeah, what you clear in the browser and on the front end is not clearing what happens in databases and on the servers on the back end. So do you think, ultimately, Dan, this is going to address these privacy concerns? Well, I think it will satisfy investors, and I think it will satisfy users. Will it address the big privacy concerns that we've seen? Probably not. But at the same time, Facebook is a platform that is components. It has many different functions. So it's almost impossible for them to head off the next big privacy scandal. Ian, some developers sat this conference out. Do you think that Zuckerberg really needed to restore confidence with these developers? Aren't they just going to partner with Facebook anyway? Well, that's the thing. Facebook is so large and so pervasive that it's hard not to work with them. I mean, one of the funny things that a lot of people in the tech industry noted was that Facebook also today announced a new dating service, which, believe it or not, hasn't been on the platform in the last 14 years, even though you can say whether or not you're in a relationship. And one of the key things that people pointed out is that a lot of dating apps allow you to sign up with Facebook, right? They, they take your Facebook profile info, they collect it, they put it into the dating app. And so here you have a company that has all this information information sitting there and they decide, oh, we're going to turn on them and start a dating app on our own. And so that, that's kind of the interesting thing is that there's always been these larger concerns about what Facebook could turn into, how they could hurt your business. And people have always had to judge whether or not working with them was better than not working with them. And privacy is just one of the parts of that conversation. Interesting, Ian, a new dating uh, aspect to Facebook. You don't have to swipe left or right. I'm taking it with this, uh, <laughs> this new app. Um, I want to ask you, though, Dan, the UK Parliamentary Committee is asking Zuckerberg to testify. He hasn't so far. They said if he doesn't show up, we're going to actually issue a summons. Do you think now that he's testified before Congress that he might be more open to testifying? I would imagine that Mr. Zuckerberg will, instead of facing the huge scandal that if he refused to go, he will show up and he'll say the exact same things or very similar things that he said on Capitol Hill. Ian, it's also being reported that Twitter sold data to a researcher linked to Cambridge Analytica. And do you think that the data that was sold to Twitter is the same situation as with Facebook? 
It is different insofar as that this was a lot of public data, uh, and and Twitter said they did their own little investigation on it, and that they found that the none of the private data from Twitter was being included in all of this. And so th this is part of the concern: is that a lot of the standard practices within the tech industry about sharing data and sharing information, those are still part of the, what goes on every day. And um, in this case, you know, this guy was doing a lot of bad stuff with Facebook data. At least he's alleged to have. And so that's that's something that he has to deal with, and now Twitter has to deal with having been a, working with him. But as far as it looks like, Twitter's probably not going to get pulled into the same kind of controversy that Facebook's been dealing with for the last month. Dan, we know just ahead of the conference, WhatsApp founder Jan Combe came forward and said that he'll be leaving the company. There have been some issues. How significant is this? This is pretty significant because it is one of a parade of Facebook executives who've left in the last several months who have had very critical things to say about the company. Let's not forget that Facebook is a platform and it's a platform that relies heavily on mobile applicate or a mobile device. The addiction or the, the uh, smartphone and social media addiction that many of his former executives have brought up along with the encryption issue that Jan uh, left because of is something that Facebook hasn't contended with yet. The Cambridge Analytica scandal has been something that percolated and then popped. And I think the next scandal might have to do with addiction to the news feed. All right. Dan Patterson, Ian Scherer, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us.